new topic. So suppose that you had a mouthful of teeth like on the left, and then you decided to remove them all. What would happen? Well, um, sorry to say that right away you begin to lose height of bone. So if you think of this model as something where we're showing just the bone itself, no gums, no muscles, we're just showing teeth and bone. And that's a pretty substantial sized jaw. There's plenty of bone there. And um, the teeth go with roots deep in the bone, and the bone can handle the stresses, and things are really nice for a long time. Now, just in case you're wondering, this part right back here is the part that forms the temporal mandibular joint. This part is called the coronoid process, and this is where the major muscles attach that go up to your temple. So when you close your jaw, this is kind of like a hinge, and the muscles attach all along these surfaces, and they help to make it so you close your jaw. There's some other muscles, such as the buccinator, that attach more up here. So there you are with a full set of teeth and a full-sized jaw. But imagine that you remove all the teeth, and right away the bone wants to shrink. So, oh my gosh, look at this. There's a huge difference between the height of the bone here. And you look at how wide the bone is. This bone isn't terrifically wide. Now it's a little wider in the back. That's helpful. But at this stage, there's still room to put implants in here. But you have to start worrying because over time the bone shrinks. So bone is an awful lot like muscle in humans. And our muscle goes away if we don't use it. We call it atrophy. Our bone goes away if we don't use it. We call it atrophy. I have a little extra tissue on my anterior abdominal wall, and I really wish that would go away. But that doesn't go away, no. No, I, I don't use my fat, and uh, it stays there and seems to grow. Too bad it isn't the other way around. Anyway. So, uh, if you had no forces on the bone, it shrinks away because it's used to having forces deep where the tooth roots are. That's what it likes. That stimulates it. That keeps the bone high. If you lose the roots of the teeth, the bone starts to shrink right away. And that keeps on going for the rest of your life. Now, if you put a denture on the surface of the bone, it wants to go away faster. And if, if we can review something I've covered in some other video that the root of the tooth has six times the surface area of the chewing surface. So each tooth has six times the root surface as chewing surface. And if you had a denture in the upper, you have the hard palate that's bony, you know, that, that takes some of the stress of the denture, that helps. But in the lower, you have your tongue in the, in the middle and the floor of the mouth. So there's only a third of the bone surface in the lower as there is in the upper. And so the upper jaw might shrink more slowly, but the lower jaw shrinks three times faster because it only has one third of the surface area as the bone of the upper jaw. All right then. So this is where we go right away when we remove all the teeth and put a denture in. Well, sorry to say that it gets worse. And it can get worse. So, I meet people occasionally where the only jawbone they have on the lower is like that. And that certainly doesn't hold a denture very well because you think about where the muscles attach. So let's line up all of our models here. All right, so here we're looking at four models that represent the progression of bone loss when you remove all the teeth in the lower. And if you think about the muscles of your lips attaching somewhere in here, and in this model they're somewhere in here, but in this model the muscles of the lip are attaching closer to the top of what's left of the bone. Same thing on the sides for where the muscles of your cheeks attach. And the same thing for the floor of your mouth on the inside where it attaches to the bone. 
So by the time you get to this case, there's not too much to hold a denture with. You get to here, oh, it's, it's pitiful. There's really nothing to hold a denture in place. It floats on the muscles. And it moves every time you move any of that. And in this case, it's even worse. So this is a really dysfunctional situation here where somebody has almost no chewing gum. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, let's keep all the teeth that we can because they hold the bone height and they have such beautiful efficiency chewing. If we can't keep some teeth or we've already lost your teeth, it's really nice to get some implants into the jawbone to work as anchors to hold a denture, but they work like teeth to help maintain the height of the jawbone. So if you had this circumstance and got implants in time, you're much less likely to wind up like this where you have to do grafting to get enough bone. And this is a more extreme case where you might need to even graft ribs or large overlays of bone to build a jaw back. So yes, it is important to get implants early on if you lose teeth, as early as you can. Next we look at the upper jaw.